Assalamu alaikum. I welcome you all to another lecture on EE434. We were discussing the inverters and in that aspect we have discussed the basic, basic form of the DC to AC inverters such as the square wave inverter. Then we discussed the Cauchy square wave inverter and then we uh, saw that how Cauchy square wave inverters with different delay angles can lead to an output voltage with multiple voltage levels. These are known as the multi-level inverters and we discussed that. Now in all these particular inverters, the main problem is the switching spectrum which happens quite close to the fundamental frequency. As a result, the requirement for the filter design is very cumbersome uh, and it actually increases the weight and the size of the, of the inverter system. So we have a very classical sort of a technique which is known as a pulse fix modulation, modulation technique, PWM technique in which we push the harmonics far from the fundamental frequency, thus they appear at higher frequency orders and therefore it is quite easy to design the filters for those, those harmonics. So in this particular lecture we will discuss the pulse switch modulation inverters. Uh, so let us start with this, uh, with this topic. PWM stands for pulse width modulation. So we achieve this pulse width modulation by comparison of two signals. One is known as a modulating signal and the other one is known as the carrier signal. We require to have two signals. The first one is the modulating signal It is also known as the reference signal or the control signal. It is a sinusoidal quantity and the second one is, is a carrier signal which is a high frequency signal on over which we modulate the low frequency modulating signal. Among these two signals, we compare these two signals and then the out, whatever the output signal is generated, we feed it to the H bridge switches which are the same as we discussed in the, in the previous inverters. Now these two signals control important aspects. For instance, this particular modulating signal, it controls the output frequency and this carrier signal determines the switching frequency at which the switches open and close. So the design in revolves around these two important waveforms because these two are the waveforms that determines the uh, pulse stretch modulation operation in, in H bridge circuit. So we have to see how these waveforms respond when we apply a different uh, sort of schemes to this H bridge inverter. So there are two types of uh, PWM schemes that we shall study. Uh, so let me write down the types of of the PWM uh, PWM schemes, and these types are based on the output voltage which is achieved. So the first one is known as a bipolar PWM scheme, and the other one is known as a unipolar is known as a unipolar PWM scheme. In a bipolar PWM scheme, the output voltage toggles between the positive VDC and the negative VDC throughout the, uh, through, in, throughout the cycle. However, in this unipolar PWM scheme, we only have a voltage between 0 and plus VDC during the positive half cycle and it toggles between 0 and minus VDC during the negative half cycle. And there comes the name of a unipolar PWM voltage switching scheme and the bipolar, uh, uni, bipolar voltage switching scheme. So let us study both of them in detail and we see how the difference in switching leads us to a frequency spectrum 
when we switch the H bridge inverter using these two schemes. So let us start with the bipolar voltage switching. So let us say we have we have an inverter here. We have four switches here. And we have a load connected here. We have this load connected. This is S1, this is S2, this is S3, and this is S4, and this is VDC. So the diagonal pairs, this S1 and this S2, these are one diagonal pair as we have seen in the previous inverters, and these two are the other two diagonal pairs. So, so let us draw the switching logic for obtaining a bipolar voltage switching. This one is the is the V triangular or the carrier waveform. It is a frequency, its frequency is higher than this reference waveform, which is a sinusoidal waveform. So this one is the V reference, which is actually a sinusoidal waveform with much lower uh, frequency compared to this carrier waveform. Complete this one here. Okay. So the switching logic is very simple. If this V sign is greater than this V triangular, then the output voltage V naught is equal to VDC. And this implies that we have to turn on the switches S1 and S2 at that particular time instant. So S1 plus S2 are on during this first logic. During the second logic, when we have V sign less than the V triangular, we have V naught equals to minus VDC. And to obtain a minus VDC across this load, we have to connect this load through the switches S3 and S4. Uh, we have to connect this load with this VDC through the switches S3 and S4. And consequently, we have S3 and S4 turn on during uh, this instant when the voltage of the sinusoidal waveform uh, is less than the voltage of the triangular waveform. So based on this thing, if we draw a pulse rate modulated signal, let us say what are the important instants here. So we have we have various instants here. And on that varying instance, I will try to draw as neat as possible the waveform of a pulse rate modulated system. So now during this pers this pers this particular time instant, we have this triangular waveform greater than the sinusoidal waveform, and therefore uh, the output voltage is is minus VDC. So we have we have this. Then we have a plus VDC available to this particular time. Here we again have the triangular waveform greater than the sine waveform so we have negative vdc and here we have we have this type of waveforms available So you can see that the width of this particular waveform is different in, in here than in here and it goes on to a narrower pulse width as we proceed further. Similarly, we have on the negative side, we have this much width for the negative half cycle that goes modulated like this uh, in this entire in, the, in this entire switching scheme. So Although this diagram is not uh, to the scale, but we can see that the width of the pulses modulate according to the frequency of the sine wave as well as the voltage of the sine and the and the uh, triangular waveform. One thing we should notice that by controlling the output frequency, we can control the 
by controlling the carrier frequency we can control the switching losses in this particular system because the switching which which happens between plus vdc and minus vdc is depending entirely on the carrier waveform which is actually our triangular waveform whereas the output frequency depends entirely on the frequency of the sinusoidal waveform which is our reference waveform and therefore by adopting this particular pulse width modulation method we can actually control the output frequency uh, according to our own requirements so uh, based on this thing as you can see we have the voltage vdc here and we have the voltage minus vdc here and therefore because of these two uh, positive and negative voltages appear throughout the switching cycle we call it a bipolar we call it a bipolar pwm pwm scheme right so we have this bipolar uh, voltage output available so how can we actually generate these uh, waveforms the one of one logic is quite simple that we have a comparator here that comparator has two inputs one on one input we supply the sinusoidal waveform and the other input we apply the high frequency switching waveform so the output waveform the the value of the output waveform is then confined between 0 and 1 using a saturated block something like this one and then we can have an output which is s1 and s2 and because like all the h bridge we do not want to dead short circuit this vdc therefore whenever this s1 is on then s4 should be turned off and cons and also we want to have a complementary signal for this s3 and s2 that can be accomplished by using a not gate here so if i use a not gate here we have this s3 and this s4 and that's how we can actually implement the switching logic for this bipolar pwm signal now before we move ahead let us move to the unipolar pwm scheme the unipolar pwm scheme has difference only in the uh, only in the switching scheme it has the same h bridge but it will yield an output voltage which toggles between 0 and plus vdc during the positive half cycle and it toggles between 0 and minus vdc when it comes in negative half cycle so let us uh, let us see how is how it is possible so this is sort of a scheme here so again we have this one the carrier waveform or the v triangular we have two different sinusoidal waveform which are 180 degree flipped or which are 180 degree out of the phase and therefore uh, we can say that we have this one this red line it, this is the v sin and this blue line is actually the minus v sin so let us develop the logic and thereafter we will see what kind of output voltage we achieve if we apply this switching logic to the h bridge inverter so uh, this switching logic is very simple we turn on the switch s1 if v sin is greater than the greater than the v triangular right we will turn on the switch s2 when minus v sin is less than the v triangular we turn on the switch s3 when we have minus v sin greater than the v triangular and s4 is on when v sin is less than the v triangular so let me draw the scheme here which is the h bridge scheme so we have we have again we have this plus this is minus so this is s1 this is s2 this is s3 and this is s4 let us draw the draw the waveforms here so this point is va and this point is vb so we will draw the waveforms for va and vb and thereafter we will see what is the vab or the differential voltage between these two points so va is because of the switching of s1 and s4 so va if s1 is if s1 is on when v sin is greater than the v triangular so here for this particular time instant we have 
we have this voltage available and this is this is Va. Then we have the triangular waveform greater than the sine waveform. So, we do not have Va here, but again we have Va here. This Va is somewhere here as well and again we have this Va available here. Here this Va is greater than the greater than the triangular waveform. Then we have here for a very small uh, time. Here we have a very narrow width here and then we have somewhere here and also here we have the this is Va. About this Vb which is the voltage here, Vb appears whenever we have whenever we have the we have this S3 on then Vb gets this VDC connected with the negative of this of this low terminal. So, what is the condition for this S3? It depends on this minus V sign. So, this is minus V sign. If it is greater than this V triangular just like here. So, we have we have Vb here. Then we have Vb here. Here we have this Vb. Here we have this this will be available here as well and and we have this type of a will be collected. So, the VAB which is the difference between this voltage VA and VB comes automatically when we subtract this VA signal from this VB signal. So, we have we have this signal available then we have let me uh, let me draw the uh, draw some dotted lines here ok. So, ok. So, then we have We have this type of a signal with that will appear across across the output. And for the negative half cycle, if we if we move ahead somewhere here, we have a negative half cycle that will have the same sort of a shape available here that starting from the narrow one, it will increase the this pulse width and then it will and then it will uh, become narrow again as well. So, you can see here that the voltage only toggles between VDC and 0 or 0 and minus VDC and therefore, this scheme is known as a unipolar voltage switching scheme pulse rate modulated inverter. Now, if you see here for this particular unipolar scheme, whenever we have S1 and S2 on, whenever we have S1 and S2 on, the VAN is equal to V D C. Whenever we have S1 and S2 on, this point A is connected with this V D C and therefore, we get V A N with respect to this neutral point. If if I if I may say this is the neutral point, then we have V A N equals to the V D C. In this particular time instant, because this S3 is off and this point B is connected with the ground terminal, therefore, Vb is equal to Vbn is equal to 0 and therefore, Vab is equal to plus Vdc here. Now, whenever we have this S4 and S3, they are turned on, then Vbn is equal to uh, Van is equal to 0, Vbn is equal to Vdc and therefore, Vab becomes equal to equal to minus Vdc. Notice here that if we turn on the switch S1 and S3 simultaneously, uh, if if it happens just something like which happens here for uh, for this very small instant of uh, time, then at that particular instant we have both the terminals of the load connected with the with the VDC, and therefore VAN is equal to VDC, VBN equals to this VDC, and therefore VAB becomes equal to equal to zero. Now if you see here, 
for this uh, for these uh, inverters that we have studied uh, the unipolar scheme all these switches actually operate at the same frequency and therefore the switching losses are very high one important uh, or one solution is to use each to, to use one lag at a lower frequency so that the switching losses can be reduced further and that can happen if we if we turn on the switches s2 and s3 or this entire lag at a lower frequency so if we switch this at a low frequency we can still get the same kind of a waveform because of the end operation which which will uh, which will automatically be generated by switching these s3 and s2 at a lower frequency however it will substantially reduce the switching losses that occur in this particular inverter scheme now one thing that what we have seen is the uh, what we have seen so far is the is the waveforms how they are produced but let us now dig deep into this particular uh, particular pwm inverter schemes and see what are the frequency spectrum and how they are affected by the voltage and the amplitude the carrier waveform and the uh, and the reference waveform so let us uh, let us do that so first of all let us let me let us get familiarized with the pwm definitions the very important uh, one the first important pwm definition is known as the frequency modulation ratio typically it is written as this m m sub f so mf is a ratio of the carrier frequency and the and the reference frequency which is the sinusoidal waveform so it is the triangular waveform divided by the f sin sinusoidal waveform now if we increase this mf if this mf is increased at at mf if this mf is higher then frequencies at which at which harmonics occur shift to the higher frequencies right so we have this mf available if we increase the mf then the frequency spectrum shifts towards the higher frequencies if we lower this mf then this frequency spectrum shifts towards the lower frequency so this is a very important design constraint uh, for the designing of the pwm inverter the second important definition is the amplitude modulation ratio we call it as an m sub a so amplitude modulation ratio defines the ratio between the amplitude of the reference waveform and the and the triangular waveform or the carrier waveform so ma is equal to v reference over the v carrier which is the v sine divided by the voltage of the triangular waveform now usually the v triangular is fixed and hence the varying voltage of a sine wave modulates the output voltage according to its own frequency and according to its amplitude now very important points uh, we need to see here that this pwm actually solves one problem that arises in the quasi square wave inverter which was the non linear control of the output voltage it is stated that if we have if we have this ma less than 1 then we have the v not equals to ma time the vdc right so this means that the v not v sorry v01 is equal to ma time vdc which means that by adjusting this ma we can compensate for any changes that occur in the dc link and that and therefore we can compensate by compensating those changes that may occur on the dc link we can make the uh, output voltage of the fundamental frequency 
essentially constant. But this is true only for m a less than one. If we go beyond this m a greater than one, then we move into the non-linear control. Although the output voltage actually increases, but the control becomes non-linear. And if we proceed more than the m a greater than two point five, then the system becomes a square waveform inverter. So let us understand these few things. Why we say that this v zero one or the fundamental amplitude of the output uh, fundamental frequency amplitude of the output waveform is directly proportional to the if it is less than one. So let us let us see this thing. Now let us say this is equation number a, and and let me draw let me draw a simple waveform. Let us say that from this particular waveform we take a very small section. For instance, we we take only only this particular section because this is uh, this has some high frequency. So let us say we only take this particular section. Uh, usually, this the frequency of the uh, triangular waveform is very high compared to the fundamental frequency. And therefore, if we take a very small segment, then for that particular small segment, let us say that this is the this is their particular small segment. So for that particular small segment, this is the V triangular, which is the peak value of the V triangular is this one. Okay. So this is the peak V triangular. So let us designate it with this hat v triangular so over because the switching frequency of this v triangular f triangular is greater than greater than the f sign therefore for a very small portion of this triangular waveform this sinusoidal waveform will looks like it will looks like a straight waveform so this is the v reference or the v sinusoidal waveform so now if we compare these two waveforms we do know that if the sine wave or the reference waveform is greater than the triangular waveform then we have the output voltage equal to the vdc so if i if i see from this duration to this duration we have the we have the output voltage greater than the we we have the output voltage equal to the vdc so we have we have output voltage equal to vdc here we have the here we have the output voltage equal to zero and therefore you can see here that the you can see here that this particular that this particular waveform is what we get at the at the output and this is at a maximum of v dc and therefore the average value of this red waveform will appear somewhere here let us say it is somewhere here so this is the average v a naught this is vdc and this red waveform this solid red ray waveform is the v a naught now if you notice here the if it is averaged over one switching period then v a naught then v a naught is equal to v reference over the v triangular the peak value of the reference waveform uh, the v reference value by the v triangular we get what is equal to in, in into this VDC we get equals to m a time this this VDC. Now this instantaneous average value of v a naught varies from one switching time to the next switching time because it's a sinusoidal waveform. So somewhere it is it it occupies a greater area and somewhere it it gets less area and consequently the average output weight value v a naught gets different values uh, with respect to the 
uh, with respect to the voltage of the reference waveform. So this instantaneous average value is same as the fundamental frequency component of this VA0. So for this reason, V reference, we always choose this V reference to be a sinusoidal so that it provides a sinusoidal output voltage with fewer harmonics. Now if we increase this MA, if this MA is greater than 1, the amplitude of the voltage increases but it is not increased linearly. And there and the reference wave voltage is usually a sine wave generated within the control circuit of the inverter or we take it from the outside for example, we take it from the grid connected system. So and this reference waveform draws very less power so it is it, it provides no harm in it. So if you in, in some textbooks it is shown that we have we have this type of a uh, of a graph between the MA and the ratio of the output waveform. So here we have, so this is the ratio of the fundamental frequency to the to the VDC. Here we have this MA and it is shown that till this MA equal to 1, the these two quantities VA01 and VDC have a linear relationship. After that, till 1.278, it is the it is the non-linear control. Although we do see an increase in the output waveform, however, the control is not linear now. It is till 0.3.24, and this particular region is known as the overmodulation is known as the overmodulation region. Thereafter, we have the the, we have the square waveform because for a square waveform a triangular waveform something like this one and we have a sine wave which goes something like this so for this entire duration since the value of the sine wave is greater than this triangular waveform so we get a positive VDC and thereafter we get a negative VDC and thus we say that if this MA is more than this 3.24 then the inverter behaves like a square wave inverter and there is no use of having a pulse wave modulation in the system. So for a linear control, this MA is kept less than 1 so that the output voltage fundamental component varies linearly uh, if, there, if there is any change in the or if there is any uh, disturbance in the DC link. We can actually control the disturbance in the DC link by adjusting the modulation in a modul amplitude modulation a ratio of uh, the sine wave and the triangular waveform. So let us see what kind of harmonics we uh, we uh, we see here in the in this particular system. So first of all, let us see what are the PWM harmonics for a for a bipolar PWM scheme. For a bipolar PWM scheme, we do know that the voltage of the Fourier waveform is expressed as V naught T n equal to infinity. We have this V n sine n omega naught T, uh, and for the and for the kth pulse, because we have the pulses available here, for the kth pulse we have V n k is equal to two by pi zero to T V T sine n omega naught t into d omega naught t and that is equal to 2 vdc over n pi into cosine n alpha k plus cosine n alpha k plus 1 minus 2 cosine n alpha k plus this delta k. So for each Fourier coefficient v n which is this one, this one, this Vn, it is the sum of the V and K for the P pulses over the entire period. This means that this Vn is actually a sum of K to P V and K. And also we have H equals to J M F plus minus plus minus K, where H is equal to 1 is fundamental. 
and for odd values of this j harmonics exist only for even values of this k and for even values of j if if this j is even then the harmonic exists for only for the odd values of k so fortunately many of the authors of power electronic books have developed the have developed the schemes for uh, demonstrating the frequency spectrum of unipolar and the bipolar uh, pwm systems so let us uh, import some uh, spectrum so thereafter we will solve one numerical to see how we can actually use those tables so there are two important tables which are given in two famous textbooks of power electronics this one is from daniel w hart that what i am we are following this particular course and this one is from ned mohan at all both of these two provide us the harmonic which will appear in a particular system if it is operated as a bipolar voltage switching scheme so if you can see here we have we have this one which is the fundamental which is the fundamental frequency and then we have this mf this 2 mf 3 mf 4 5 6 up till the nth now the table which is given in this daniel w hart book is a simplified version it provides us the amplitude va over vdc va over vdc and this is actually a uh, 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 it is actually an absolute value so it do not encompasses for the phase shift in the harmonics it just shows you the amplitude here we have this distributed from 0 to 1 and we can see here that the amplitude of the fundamental value 1 shows it is equal to 1 also we have this ma on this side ma is equal to 1 then 0.9 0.8 0.7 0.6 5 5 4 0.3 0.2 and 0.1 on the other side we have in this ned mohan table we have only the 0.2 0.4 0.6 0.8 and 1.0 and it also shows the amplitude of the fundamental component as well so if this ma is equal to 1 then the fundamental amplitude is equal to 1 which is shown here and here and this is exactly what we have seen that the output voltage of the fundamental frequency is directly proportional to the uh, ma uh, along with the vdc so the voltage is equal to 1 for the fundamental value there after we have the first harmonic will appear at mf so we have this n is equal to mf here we have this mf here and if for this uh, for this for the point 2 if we can see for this point 2 if ma is set at point 2 then this is equal to 1.242 uh, which is equal to 1.24 then we have the next spectrum is at mf plus minus 2 it is 0.016 so mf plus minus 2 0.016 it is rounded off here as as point 0.02 uh, so this table which is given in this daniel w hart book is a simplified form it provides you the spectrum for not only for this mf whereas this table is only related to uh, to this particular area this table encompasses for not only for, for this 2 mf for this 3 mf and the 4 um, 4 mf as well it is always sane to limit the analysis up to some uh, some typical uh, frequency spectrum so let us solve uh, one numerical here uh, and see how we can use these two tables to identify the harmonics in a in a given system Now suppose that let us do an example. Suppose that we have VDC equals to hundred volt. We have MA equals to zero point eight, and MF equals to twenty one. With the fundamental frequency equals to sixty hertz. We need to find out the v1 the amplitude of the fundamental waveform the fundamental component of the load current the power absorbed by the load and the thd of the of the load current so r 
is equal to 10 ohm we have inductance equals to we have inductance equals to 20 milli henry so let us first of all find out what is the what is the frequency of the triangular waveform so as a solution we will start with the first thing first f triangular is equal to 21 times 60 so that is equal to 1260 hertz so you can see that this triangular waveform has a frequency which is very high compared to the compared to the fundamental frequency uh, which is f1 so the first thing is to find out v1 and i load 1 this one indicates that we want to find out the fundamental frequency component so for that v1 is equal to ma times this vdc ma is 0.8 and this vdc is 100 so it is simply equals to 80 volts the i load requires to calculate the impedance of the load for that for that we will say we will see i n is equal to v n over z n and that is equal to 80 divided by 80 divided by r square plus plus 2 pi f into the inductance which is equal to 20 milli henry square and that gives me equal to 6.6.3 nm ampere now we want to find out the power absorbed by by the load resistance r right so we want to find out what is the power absorbed by the load resistance r rl for that we will use we will use the table which is given here either of these two table we want to use it right so let us see how we can use it uh, let me copy this one and we will paste it here okay so hopefully it is uh, visible to you now if we see here m a is equal to 0 0.8 this is the this is the first parameter which means that i will i am only interested in in these in these components right similarly if i am using this particular table so this whole area is this whole area is is my playground so looking on to this point 8 i can see that i have a frequency at mf then mf minus 2 and then mf plus 2 so this is the fundamental component we have already calculated to be equal to 80 volt so this mf is equal to equal to 21 so the so the frequency that will appear in the spectrum is at 21st then at the 19th and then at the 23rd harmonic so you can see here that right after the fundamental frequency we are not experiencing low frequency harmonics rather the frequency spectrum is starting from the 19th harmonic which is far away from the from the fundamental component and therefore the filter design is quite easy now what are the values of these uh, ma and mf for this let us see what is the what is the voltage of this 21st harmonic component so 21st harmonic component is 0 0.82 so v21 is equal to 0 0.82 times 100 which is the vdc and therefore it is equal to it is equal to 82 volt similarly we have mf minus 2 which is v19th and v23rd they both have the same amplitude because of this uh, because of this uh, relation we have vmf plus minus 2 so that is equal to 0 0.22 into 100 and that is equal to that is equal to 22 so now if we draw the uh, spectrum of if we simulate this particular system then this particular wave this particular is equal to 82 volts 
and the side bands here which is mf plus minus 2 they both are equal to this 22 uh, 22 volt so now you can see that these side lobes are exactly of the same amplitude while the uh, exact value at mf uh, which is n is equal to mf is equal to is equal to 82 uh, percent of the of the applied dc voltage so using this particular thing we can see that we have uh, we have this 82 volt at 1260 hertz and similarly we have this 22 volt at 1140 hertz and at 1380 80 hertz now because the load is not purely resistive therefore we require to again find out the impedance for that appear for each of the uh, each of these uh, frequency harmonic harmonic frequency components let me find out what is i21 i21 is equal to is equal to 82 divided by 10 square plus 21 into 60 into 2 pi into 0 0.02 whole square and that turns out to be equal to 0 0.516 ampere on the similar grounds this i19 comes out to be equal to 0 0.153 ampere and i23 comes out to be equal to 0 0.126 ampere so the power associated with this 21st harmonic is equal to i n rms square into r that is equal to i n over under root 2 square into r and that is equal to 1.33 watt similarly i can find out p19 to be equal to 0 0.11 watt and this p23 to be equal to 0 0.079 watt and the power is 204 watt for the for the fundamental component so if i create a cumulative effect then power is the sum of all the power so that is approximately equals to 204 plus 0 0.11 plus 1.33 plus 0 0.079 plus like this and this comes out to be equal to 205.5 watt remember that this this whole area is further higher order harmonics that can be calculated by using this particular table 2 mf plus minus 1 so let us uh, calculate this for 2 mf plus minus 1 now that we have the uh, we have the 2 mf plus minus 1 indicates that the next harmonic spectrum so at 2 mf plus minus 1 which means that this is equal to 2 into 21 plus minus 1 so it is 42 plus minus 1 so the next harmonic spectrum shall appear at 43rd and the 41st harmonic and the amplitude of these two waveforms uh, of this 2 mf plus minus 1 is 0.314 then we have 0.139 you can actually generate this table by using softwares like matlab or mathcad and you will see that this this table might have values which are which are negative as well and which shows the phase inverse for uh, for some uh, specific uh, harmonic content so uh, this is uh, how we can use this particular table we have the similar kind of a table for uh, for the for the unipolar scheme as well for the unipolar scheme so similar kind of table exists for for unipolar voltage switching scheme of a pwm inverter and it is given in uh, textbooks like Daniel Hart and Ned Mohan. So here we have uh, this one uh, again on the same pattern we have n is equal to 1 for ma equal to 1 it is actually a linear control as you can as evident from this particular uh, this particular line as evident from this one and we have then we have the next harmonic appearing at n is equal to 2 mf plus minus 1 right previously it was not at mf is equal to 2 plus minus 1 rather it was at n is equal to mf so we have 
harmonics further shifted uh, away uh, to the higher frequencies in a unipolar PWM scheme compared to a compared to a bipolar scheme. Uh, so I urge you to solve example 8.9 of the textbook written by Daniel Hart, a good book to uh, which showcases how the design process of an inverter is accomplished. The simulations of the these particular uh, uh, switching schemes PWM spectrum uh, along with the PWM spectrum I have already produced those uh, schemes and I and I have uh, I will share the link in the description below so that's all for today thank take care Allah Hafiz